Investment simplified and amplified on All About Stocks. Prepare for trading with ET Now's weekend market shows only on ET Now. Hello and welcome to the Agenda for Renewal, the big theme at the ET Awards for Corporate Excellence. Of course, India finds itself today stuck in a crossfire, one of a global crisis and on the other hand, a corruption conundrum. India Inc.'s Who's Who have now put together what is likely to be the priority list that can change and help India reset. Bring the growth story back on track with the promise of uplifting the poor, improving education, healthcare and making livelihood wholesome. Let me start by introducing my special panel, Adi Godrej, Rajan Mittal, Pramod Basin and Zia Modi. Thank you very much all for joining us, three gentlemen and a lady, thank you very much. Let's start though with Mr. Godrej. Not a great year, Mr. Godrej. We're looking into a brand new strategy for India. What do you think could be the agenda for renewal? No, clearly uh, this financial year hasn't turned out to be as well as it was expected to. Clearly we've been hampered by the global scenario. We've also been hampered by the anti-corruption movement in India in terms of growth. But I look at the anti-corruption movement as short-term pain but long-term gain. I think it will lead to greater transparency in India and that in turn could help economic growth going forward. But I think the most important agenda which needs to be attended to as early as possible is the passage of the goods and services tax. That itself could add one and a half to two percentage points to India's GDP growth, other things being equal. And I think it is the one reform that could transform the situation, both in terms of the macroeconomic situation, it could help bring inflation down, it could help bring the fiscal deficit down, and it would help growth tremendously. Right, so you put down your point. Zia Modi, what kind of a constructive priority list you think can make up for this agenda for renewal? It obviously goes beyond just India Inc's own hunger. Um, I think uh, maybe more than three or five, but uh, I think the uh, big issues would be the obvious ones. Uh, one is to really um, tackle the inflation, especially food inflation, and to really get down to business with uh, sensible agricultural reforms and the positive steps uh, that need to be taken to address that. Uh, the next, of course, is to think of, uh, it's a, more of a sort of a broader uh, issue, but how do we restore investor confidence? How do we talk about the good things that are happening in the country? How do we balance the negativity with the positive, uh, posi positive stuff that is happening? Uh, and then I think that, you know, a whole series of uh, uh, important but uh, uh, not yet taken up issues about uh, when you talk about foreign direct investment which has slowed down, how do you uh, scale that up? Uh, what are you going to do about things which are imminent, which should have happened, like increase in insurance, increase in multi plan what do you do about police reforms? How does the opposition play a constructive role? That's right. How does opposition play a constructive role? Part of that theme is to what extent is confidence truly dented in India? You just alluded to the fact that we need to bring back investor confidence. We need to add to India more positive elements than not just highlighting the negative. To what extent, according to you, is the confidence hit? I think they are uh, hurting. Uh, I think that there's a couple of things. For those who are, of course, directly involved in the uh, various matters at hand, especially in the telecom sector, Obviously, the mood cannot be uh, optimistic. I think that a lot of other, uh, I think the concern is that uh, the sense I get is that even mid-caps and uh, other groups which are not involved in the problems that uh, some of the larger houses are having are uh, wondering how much of their capital and energy they should be investing in India as opposed to going outside. And I think that is the issue that concerns me uh, because obviously we want India Inc. to grow India uh, as well rather than only wanting to think of how to go outside simply because of this uh, 
uh, tension and stress uh, that uh, the atmosphere is producing. That's a very pertinent point. We need India to grow at, uh, within inside rather than sort of constantly look at opportunities overseas or just cross-border transactions. Let's talk about reform, Rajan Mittal. The dream team seems suddenly like a forgotten legacy. Isn't it time we draw up a brand new list of priorities and the dream team that has so far been hailed about 20 years ago for reforms needs to make a comeback? You know, I think uh, while it's been much debated that the first uh, 20 years of reforms have taken place and I have to say that the first 20 years have been uh, commendable for a country which has moved or kind of reset in uh, early 90s. And I think the, the next phase we have to all now consider to going forward is also getting <clears throat> keeping in mind the demographics that this country has, the younger generation's aspirations that we have. We need to uh, go for the second wave of reforms, which includes opening up sectors like retail, defense, uh, financial services, particularly insurance, and for getting a long-term investment to come into the infrastructure projects, which we all know are greatly needed for this country if we have to grow the kind of growth that we are seeking. Pramod Basin, FDI, financial inclusion, of course, to a great extent, just growth for India, Inc., balanced economy. Really, these are buzz phrases that have been a part of India's table for some time. But what about the agenda that's uh, some sort of a, taken some sort of a back seat? Agriculture, education. How does the government explain ignoring those? I mean, they are, after all, the government's priority. People are more and more concerned about where money is being spent and how it's being lost. So I think as that has happened, <clears throat> there have been increasing gaps that have come up where the government has almost had to fear uh, to tread into various sectors. <clears throat> this is not a good trend, by the way. This is not a good trend. So the combined impact of all the audits, of all the trails, of all the questions, of all the things that are going around which stop decision making is actually very profound, in my view. I think that's one. I think policy and internal bickering on the government side has been another. Third, which I think is equally important as the first, is we've extended and pulled our infrastructure to the limit. Our capacity to execute is actually very, very poor. And that's really what's stopping us. The capacity to execute in India is, a, is, one of, is our biggest single issue. So you put all of this on the execution side. Mr. Adi Gudraj, hasn't the government been just too slow? Many bills are languishing and everything that you, Zia, Rajan and Pramod are asking for are suddenly just hanging out there for approval. They've been around far too long. Yes, unfortunately there has been, uh, uh, there has been a slowdown in decision making in the government. The government is probably too preoccupied with the anti-corruption and other political developments. So I feel that uh, uh, the government should try to make sure that the reform agenda is backed fully in the near future. Reform agenda backed fully in the future, but we can't quite wish away, Mr. Godrej, the scams or the corruption which are very much linked to reform because it involves key decisions to be taken. We don't have verdicts in place and we certainly don't have a short-term answer to any of this. No, it's clear. I think we must bring in more transparency. We must bring in quicker automatic decision making. Government should not have to pass everything on a case by case basis. Any government asset should be, should be sold only by a clear transparent auction. For example, the 2G scam was one of the biggest uh, scams in the near past. But we had a 3G auction after that, which went off very well because it was very well handled and it was auctioned in a very fair manner. So clearly some changes which are not difficult to make uh, uh, should be implemented as soon as possible. So I look upon this anti-corruption situation as short-term pain but long-term gain. Okay, Pramod, react to that. Short-term pain, says Adi Godrej. Do you agree? And if so, how? Because isn't the pain really long-term? Since you talked about education and in terms of infrastructure, a huge issue of execution. So we're not going to find a short-term fix. Yes. <laughs> you know, we, I, I, it feels like a lot of short-term pain to me right now. Um, you know, there's a lot of pain in the system, a lot of stress a lot of uh, stretching of the boundaries of what 
our current capabilities are, uh, are able to achieve. So I think there's a lot of short-term pain. There will be more. I absolutely agree with Adi. I think writing the pendulum is an important element of what's happening today. Uh, the public is mad. Um, public is mad about capitalism. The public is mad about uh, government spending. The public is mad about a private sector also, which, you know, it's very easy for us to say that the government is corrupt. There is a, someone, there's a giver here at the other side, and uh, the private sector works directly with the government. And I think those two elements have to be righted. So the pendulum needs to swing uh, more to correct that imbalance, and perhaps it will overswing the other way for a period of time. That pain we will go through. Zia Modi, let me add a bit of controversy to this story by asking you a question which actually puts India Inc. on the back foot. Are they getting worried about the volatility that a high growth economy like India brings on the table? While it's great, they can reap the benefits as it goes, but the bureaucracy, corruption and the kind of approval times that it takes to get through. Do you think India Inc. is beginning to hedge against the India story itself? I think India is a great story, I think, even for India Inc. I think that uh, the mood is we don't know what will come and bite us, when, how, um, and therefore we need to hedge much more than we were doing earlier. Uh, and therefore I think maybe the 100% the, 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 the enthusiasm that one could have seen maybe about 3-4 years ago would have come down to maybe 60, 70, maybe sometimes 50%. Mr. Godrich. Is it a good idea that the government takes a bit of a break from this growth story and inflation, etc., and starts focusing a little more on public infrastructure? I know we could have taken, uh, well, we could have cashed into this opportunity with the world crisis, etc., but perhaps we need to look within, as Zia Modi was saying, we need to build the country itself. Not at all, because without growth, there will be no progress. Growth is required for financing the progress. And clearly, infrastructure can only be financed. Infrastructure can only be put in place, whether it is physical infrastructure or social in infrastructure. If right. the economy is doing well, revenues are strong, and government uh, uh, coffers uh, get filled through the growth process. Pramod, we've seen all through, all of us have been saying, we need this from the government, we need that from the government. Does India Inc. end up shooting over the government's shoulder on most cases? Is there scope of India Inc. doing a little more participation? Well, there's, there's two elements to this, I would say. I think, one, the government should move back from many of the ministries. It must resist the temptation to dabble, uh, as I call it, to tweak a rule here, to tweak a point there. doesn't help. Um, we don't need it. Having said that, industry must step up. Industry must step up and drive an agenda on corruption. Industry must step up and drive an agenda of saying whatever we are doing, whatever we promise when we say we will build hospitals that take us to the rural area, we do so. When we say we will build roads and help build roads productively, we will do so. When we say we will do education, sector skills, you know, all of that is going to happen through the private sector. Government can't deliver everything to us. And with that admission that government cannot deliver everything to us, so let's get Rajan Mittal to comment before we take a quick break. Rajan, the point is, is there enough opportunity back home that you would like to signal to the rest of the world and to your fellow India Inc. Uh, members? No, I would say, look, uh, you know, as I said, uh, the, the uh, world economies like U.S., Europe are also struggling and you are intertwined today in their economic world today. You cannot be in isolation and say that while they are struggling and, you know, uh, have we missed the bus. I think some uh, time you do hit that roadblock, but as I said, we still have this window of opportunity and I'm sure that uh, we will exercise uh, very diligently. Okay, you're getting optimistic, which is always a good sign, because without that, we can't even look for solutions. We're going to slide into a very short break. When we come back, you're going to get more details on what is the agenda for renewal for the ET Awards of Corporate Excellence. Stay with us. This show brought to you by Nissan Micra. Drive simpler, live better. Mahindra Navi Star, Badal Rahe, Bhartia Trucking Co. Bajaj Allianz, SMS Live to 56070 or Geo Bay This week we head to Pune Connect for the Starting Up Showdown, a face-off between four disruptive product startups. The prize, entry into the next round of Super Angels. 
all this and more on starting up only on ET Now. Brought to you by LG Optimus Smartphones. Murgapa, 29 businesses, one powerful group.